Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Rapid Recap here at Inside Nebraska. It's been a long time, uh, I think, since we've been in this building. Tim, this is Tim Berghese. He is our new recruiting analyst and football writer at Inside Nebraska. We want to welcome Tim on. Tim, it's been a while since you've been back in this building until today, I believe, or until this week. Yes, yeah, it was just, it was just telling uh, you know, some people around here, you know, this building hasn't changed, this specific building hasn't changed a whole lot since I've been here, but there's a lot that's changed on campus. And obviously, you know, last time I was here, Scott Frost was still the head coach. So happy to be back and, uh, you know, excited to cover this program. Yeah, man, you were, uh, we were here on, for the press conference earlier in the week and you're like, yeah, where's the media center? I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Like last time you were here, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, hadn't been built yet. So there's changes in this program. Um, from a structural standpoint, building standpoint, but also culturally, I think uh, this is the, this is, this is it right now. Mm -hmm. I know I uh, hadn't planned on talking about this today, but just uh, going off the riff here. I mean, you mentioned um, sort of uh, uh, that sense of urgency in the building, um, and that's that's sort of been a theme this this off season when Rule Talk has uh, met with us, met with the media before in January, February. It's like. I think he gets a sense that this the time is now like this is the time to strike this is the year where we really build on the foundation we laid last year and start trying to take off in uh in, in year two so i don't know if you had thoughts on that just like maybe from a ten thousand foot view or now that you're up close to it seeing that sense of urgency yeah i mean i i've noticed just a lot different um you know just the way people in this athletic department interact with each other you know there's it's a lot more tight knit. I think the culture is a lot better. Just, you know, department to department, team to team, everyone's interacting. We witnessed that on Tuesday at the athletic director press conference. Um, and, and even, you know, on the point that Zach was touching on, that sense of urgency, um, Dannon himself mentioned it in his press conference. Him and Rule talk all the time, you know, play, with the playoff expansion with 12, they talk about how do they get into the 12? How do they get into the 12? And, um, you know, for Nebraska, like, that door is open now. They don't have to be the Big Ten champion. They just have to win a certain amount of games. You know, the path to that playoff is open for them now, and, and they're working to get there. And, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, the, the expectation for this coming year is just, you know, make a bowl game, you know, mm -hmm. have some success and, you know, get back to winning football. But, you know, they're close. They feel they're closer than, they, than you know, potentially outside world things. And, uh, you know, it kind of shows in just the way they're operating right now. Yeah, and the, I mean the the college football playoff is going to dominate. It dominates like every every week of college football conversation, and it gets a little taxing. But I think there's going to be a day. I don't think it's going to be this year, but I think there. I think we're seeing the the pieces being laid, foundation being laid, last year, and then building on it to where they're they're sort of building toward that 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 national competitiveness. First, you got to get the respectability back. And you saw that you saw Nebraska gain that a little bit last year, um, gain that back um, in a significant way until they faded down the stretch. And then now it's about it's about maintaining what they already did and then building on it. And a big way that they're going to do that is by having the, the spring practices today or this week. They've had three um, quarterback was a big uh, was a big topic of conversation um, and. I mean, today was the first time that we saw Dylan Rayola live in person in Nebraska pads. We saw him at Pro Day last week. Him and Daniel Kalen were throwing to the um, to guys like Billy Kemp, Josh Fleeks, and the like. But today was the first time you see him in pads, and you see the red 15, red, the, the green, the green jersey, and the and the Nebraska N, and that 15 looks good on him. I mean, you guys talked about. It. I feel like I've been talking about it for. I, I literally have been talking about it for two years. That he's a spitting image. Of, uh, of Patrick Mahomes, just the look, the frame, um, physical standpoint, the way he throws the ball, the way he just his gait and the way he walks and all that. But um, today was the first time we saw Dylan Rayola up close. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, just from, from what we got to see, you know, the arm is, you know, checks out. Um, <laughs> you know, watch, watching that QB group go through, it just very clearly one guy in there that has just a different type of arm than everyone else. Um, but that's not to discredit Daniel Kalen. Um, I think he's come in and done a better job than some people expected, uh, a little bigger than people expected, put on some good weight, um, but really impressed with kind of what I saw from the QB group, even Harburg as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Harburg looks, I mean, he's standing next to Dylan and Dylan sort of, I mean, 
Daniel Kalen, it's, it's clear that from a physical, physical readiness um, standpoint that I, Dylan is Dylan's far and, uh, far and above Danny as far as ready to play as a freshman, ready to start as a freshman. Um, and I think that, that difference is noticeable. But Harburg, I mean, you see Dylan and, and Heinrich standing next to each other. It's like, okay, those two guys are comparable physically. Um, just from a stature standpoint, and listen, I've I've been saying it over and over, like the the quarter, like you're kidding yourself if you think this is an actual quarterback competition. It's just a formality, which I still believe it is. I still think Dylan Rail is going to win the job, um, but Harburg, uh, Matt Rule said today that Harburg's been taking the first reps in quarterback drills this week, which is to be expected. Rule's quote was that uh, he. He's not going to put a freshman in for the, the top of the line for those drills over a guy who just started for us a season ago, which, again, respectable and to be expected. Harburg's going to try to plant his flag in that, in that quarterback race, but, um, I mean, just looking down the line, I think, I think this is Dylan Rayla's uh, uh, job. Not, not job to lose, definitely not because of what I said about Harburg, but... I think it's uh, it's there for the taking for him to go out and win, which I, I do think he will. But Matt Rule talked about the quarterback competition today, mm-hmm. um, and sort of where that stands as we as we're through three practices now. Right, right. Um, so excited to see more from the QBs. Um, you know, I think that's that's something that you know will be a storyline because of Dylan, because of you know, Harburg will be a storyline for the rest of spring. But you know, like Zach said, right now. Harburg's leading the way in QB drills, but you know who knows how long it is until you know, kind of Dylan's taking those those first snaps. Yeah, we're three practices in, yeah. so we don't have to make any definitive statements about uh, about the quarterback competition. But I do. I want to because <laughs> I've been I've been I've been dying on that hill since pretty much the day that uh, he committed and signed. But um, uh, just sort of switching gears here to uh, beyond the quarterback race. And uh, but actually, one last thing to hit on was uh, was Rule's quote that. Um, uh, pretty much the, the exact quote was, I need all three guys ready to start at the end, after spring, mm-hmm. after spring ball is over, which, um, I mean, yeah, it, it, most people watching this, Husker fans are, will be, uh, will be aggravated, but, uh, aggravated to tell you about the, the history of Nebraska quarterbacks health over the past, uh, over the past several years. Uh, I, I can't remember, I think it was like 2010 was the last time, uh, the starting quarterback in Nebraska made it all the way through the season um, without missing <laughs> missing any games. But so they have a history there um, uh, to sort of be worried about. I guess if you're if you're a Nebraska fan, but they'll they'll want those three guys ready um, ready to go. But switching gears today, this morning there was a, a 20 minute open viewing period um, for the for Thursday's third practice of spring, and uh, at 20 minutes to sort of just walk around and. Um, check everything out. Six new transfers, bunch of early enrollees. Uh, what, what was your biggest takeaway from today? Yeah, biggest takeaway, you know, the guys that these quarterbacks are going to be throwing to. Um, I think you can see a, a, almost a full turnaround, even from when I was covering the program a couple of years ago to, you know, what I, w- I saw from afar the last couple of years to this last year and now this year. Uh, they're just bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. Um, you know, the, the two transfers that you know, Isaiah Neor and uh, Jamal Banks, both of those just immediately catch your attention just off the rip. Um, you know, Neor specifically, you know, if he can get back to that Wyoming form, you know, that's a very mm-hmm. dangerous weapon for this offense. Um, Banks looked the part as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see where he fits in, you know, compared to some of these other receivers. He's more of like a reliable, um, you know, yards gainer type um you know it's going to have some sideline catches you know going to move the sticks a little bit but you know not going to count on banks to be a guy that's going to like you know break a home run or anything um or break a long touchdown or anything like Jalen Jalen Lloyd's like your home run threat yes. a little bit more than Malachi Coleman too but I think like you're saying he's a banks is a big body possession receiver who I think whoever the quarterback is it's going to know, like, okay, if, it, if, if all else fails, I get, I get to throw it up to Banks, and, like, maybe he comes down with it. Yeah, and even beyond him, you know, some of the second-year guys, you know, uh, Jaden Doss looked good today. Jalen Lloyd's added a little weight, looks, looks good running around today. Um, you know, Demetrius Bell, that's a name, you know, we've talked about or, you know, people mm-hmm. have talked about all offseason, and, 
you know, he's added some weight, looks good going through drills, and he's one that, you know, will be a name to keep on pretty much all of spring. But really impressed with what I saw out of them. And then, you know, Dante Dowdle and, and the running backs as mm -hmm. well. You know, that offensive group just in, as a whole, you know, between the transfers and everything, just look bigger, look faster, look stronger. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Isaiah Nair, like getting back to that, the pre-ACL injury and um, sort of leads into a, a, another thought um, related to that is Stephon Thompson, Syracuse linebacker transfer. And um, he's, sort of, he's in a, a very, very similar boat where he's trying to get back to the form he had pre-ACL injury two years ago. And um, I mean, I, I wrote today that in a, a Pre spring ball preview that Stefan Thompson was my was my pick for to be the highest impact transfer um, of the six guys. You can make a strong case for I think four of them uh, to wind up being the high the um, make the biggest impact this season. And I went with Stefan Thompson. Then today you find out from uh, from Matt Rule. I think Steve Mark, our uh, inside Nebraska um, football beat writer, he uh, he asked about Stefan Thompson. I think it was a little surprising to hear. Uh, rules say, yeah, that uh, Stefan's had a tough time transitioning. Uh, he didn't come in, in here in the greatest shape. And then he's had tough, uh, tough time adjusting to sort of, I think he said... Um, the workouts. Just, yeah. hadn't had, had, just hasn't had a workout regimen. You know, coming from Syracuse, just, yeah, it, it's different at the P5 or I guess P4 level now. Um, you know, the, the, the strength programs at these levels are just so much more involved, you know, than... Especially you know, in the Big Ten compared ex to the Especially ACC. in the Big Ten, yes. Yeah, I don't know if you had any thoughts on Stefan Thompson or uh, any, any any other takeaways from Rule's time at the podium? Yeah, um, just again, that sense of urgency, you know, talking about Stefan, talking about even Micah, um, you know, the, the O-line transfer. Um, bazooka. Yeah. Bazooka, bazooka. <laughs> and, you know, talking, to the, talking about those guys specifically, you know, um, you know, in pre previous months, you know, Rule's ge remained generally positive to media about um, – guys in the building and you know has tried to control the narrative there um, but he himself was like hey with, with guys like Stefan and Micah they're here for one year I'm trying to push them because they're trying to be pros I'm trying to make sure you know so so there's a sense of urgency here just in trying to get, get these guys developed but also to get the point across to these guys you can tell you know it was a calculated move calling both those guys out the way he did yeah. in press conference in the press conference today yeah we saw that last uh, last fall not work out in rules favor when uh, when he was open and honest about Anthony Grant's ball security issues in practice, and then we see the fumble uh, at, at Minnesota that led to the, that that Gophers comeback. But um, it is, like you said, it's calculated. I mean, I feel like 99.8% of what Rule does is is calculated, if not 100%. But I mean, you, you don't usually, you're not. I don't think usually going to hear him call out the younger guys, like you said, it's the veterans that they're coming here, like. You have there. You came here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, yes, there are other reasons, but number one, far and away, is to get that last year development on a, a team with a coaching staff full of former NFL guys who have that um, that reputation who can get you there. So, take this shit seriously. Yeah. I mean, take like take it seriously and attack it in the off season. Otherwise, you're not fitting our program. You're not fitting our culture of what we're what we're trying to do with, with this sense of urgency that we keep we keep talking about that's sort of this the theme of uh matt rule year two but uh, i did a terrible job of introducing tim <laughs> um he is like i say he's our new recruiting analyst and he's a football writer he's gonna be doing uh some of that stuff for us um and and these videos and uh mainly though recruiting is his beat and just want to close it out here with any uh any any thoughts uh any recruiting tidbits or thoughts or any standout visitors from today's practice anything you wanted to wanted to touch on yeah just just a couple things very small group of visitors today we've got a gallery up at inside nebraska of the recruits that were in attendance um you know 2025 nebraska athlete commit caden vermas made the trip up from made the trip down from millard um to see practice uh you know he was with his teammate uh three-star athlete pierce mooberry pierce is a bigger athlete 6'4 230 kind of you know can play a couple different positions um not committed to Nebraska, has three offers, but you know, Nebraska's obviously pushing and his own teammate Caden's pushing as well. Um, 2024 signee, Donovan Jones stopped by. I actually got to, I was at Warren Academy last night, caught up with him, he was training over there. Um, he told me he's planning to be here, you know, around, around once a week or so during the spring, try and take in at least one practice a week, you know, when he can fit it in around his school schedule. They practice on Saturdays as well, so figure from here on out, we're probably just gonna see him on Saturday. 
Um, and yeah, he'll be here at the spring game at the end of the end of the end of the month. Um, expected with a large group of visitors and fellow signees that haven't enrolled yet. And he's expected to enroll in June and he's training and ready to get on campus. Um, as far as the, the non-in-state guys, a uh, big visitor um, of the day was uh, 2026 Billings West out of Montana. Billings West uh, athlete Moose Ludwig. Matthew Ludwig is his name. He goes by Moose. Um, Jumbo I you were athlete. saying his name was Billings West. I'm like, what the hell is the name? <laughs> Uh, but Matthew Ludwig, uh, you know, and he's, uh, he's a jumbo athlete. Nebraska offered him a month or two ago. This is his first visit down. We'll have plenty on him over the weekend, catching up with him. Uh, he's got some Husker ties as well. Um, so, you know, it was good to see him in the building and, uh, yeah, one to keep an eye on. And then one last tidbit, uh, just, you know, while we've been at practice, I've been texting, DMing, figuring out, you know, new intel from recruits. Uh, just one quick tidbit, uh, Jack Lang, four-star tackle out of Eureka, Missouri. He's set to make an official visit to Nebraska in June. He has been to Nebraska three times thus far in his recruitment, planning another trip. He's gonna be here unofficially for the spring game and he'll be here officially at the end of June. Nebraska's gonna get that last official visit. Well, right as of right now, he's scheduled only four, but Nebraska's gonna get that last official. They're in great position right now, but they're battling Notre Dame, Michigan, Missouri, among others, you know, top top 200 prospects. So, you know, who's who is in this recruitment um, right now? But, you know, Nebraska's done a really good job there right now, and they look to, you know, strengthen their position in these coming months. I'm just letting you cook, man. That was a lot of <laughs> That's info, it for me. a lot of stuff. <laughs> it, it, it's funny, it reminds me that uh, of our phone conversation, our Zoom conversation, we were uh, talking about you potentially coming onto our team, and there's like a five minute uh, portion of that call where you're just, you're like rattling off all these recruits and I'm like, I have no idea who any of these guys are, <laughs> but like they all have Nebraska interests. You're like rattling them off. I'm like, this is a good sign. Like anytime that I'm like hearing about guys, a bunch of names that I have no idea they are, who they are. I'm like, he clearly does. <laughs> Tim clearly does. So I mean like, all right, like he, he's on top of it. Like you weren't even, you weren't even covering Nebraska and you're already on top of it and had the had the background details, but I, that just stood out in my mind. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, like we got to hire him. He's, <laughs> he's saying a bunch of people I don't even recognize. I, I, I recognize uh, several of those names. I mean, Donovan Jones, the guy who, uh, he's like the forgotten guy in the class who's like been talked about so many times as the forgotten man in the class that he's now like yeah, reversing he's, he's, it. He's everyone's favorite <laughs> yeah. underrated member of the class. Yeah. Um, and it is true though, he is, he's very underrated. Even getting to watch him work yesterday, um, says a lot about his character. He was out there with Warren Academy. They're practicing for their seven on seven season. And he's out there. They were down bodies. He's out there at safety, you know, teaching the young guys, guiding the young guys, you know, also manning the safety spot, getting reps, getting live reps. Uh, he's got a younger brother coming up that, you know, is going to be one to keep an eye on out of Omaha North in the coming years. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, one of those, him and Caleb Benning, I think, are those two, like, these guys are just really good football players. Um, and then, you know, we're going on a different bit of a different tangent here. Yeah. But in that 24 class, you've got some of these guys coming in over the summer that can fit a lot of different roles. And they just, just good. You, it's, you can never have too many good football players on your team, you know. And so yeah. uh, looking forward to those guys getting up on here on campus. Yeah, that's something the rules talked about, like never have enough O linemen or enough D linemen. So it, 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 they just do not care. They've made it very clear. We they don't care about the the 85 man scholarship limit which is sort of going by the wayside with nil stuff but that's it for us uh we go on more tangents about nil and <laughs> roster uh management scholarships and everything like that but uh tim like uh, uh like he just gave the rundown there he's gonna have a bunch of stuff up on uh, insidenebraska.com and the insiders board our uh, premium message board there we're gonna be uh ramping up a podcast here in a few weeks um getting the recruiting blitz going back uh Getting that going again um, on our, our YouTube channel. I encourage you guys to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video, and uh, you can get those uh, videos dropped directly into your feed. Again, more uh, press conference coverage from today and recruiting stuff from Tim at InsideNebraska.com. So I encourage you guys to go check that out. So for Tim, I'm Zach Carpenter. We'll catch you guys again next time.